than I would personally head cannon Spock as gay. Head cannon Spock as gay. Spock as gay. Spock as gay. They just had to go and make me look like a fool. Welcome to Pride Month, fellow DGENs. It's almost time for Strange New World Season 2, and I wanted to talk about how I felt about the first season, specifically how they adapted Spock. I might make a video in the future about my feelings on SNW, which are... mixed. But I want to talk about this phenomenon, nay, this fixation with making Spock the puss-crushingest, super-straightest, hetery, hetero that ever boldly went. Credit where credit is due, Star Trek is doing fairly well with queer representation. Discovery has a ton of openly queer characters. Picard, for the giant cluster f that it was, gave us Seven and Rafi. There's Beckett Mariner on Lower Decks. We're not exactly starved for representation here. And yet, I just can't get over this one thing, so... I'm gonna bitch about it. I don't have to be nice and upbeat and fair all the time. Who do I look like? Jesse Gender? I wish. First of all, yes, I'm aware that my reading of Spock is just that, a reading. It's not actually canon that Spock is gay, it's not even canon that Spock is queer at all. However, canon is wrong, Spock is a full-ass Kenzie Six gay boy. I already talked plenty about the queer coding of Spock in my History of Spurk video, which you can check out here, but I'm, I am going to be going over some of those points again right now, so sorry, you're gonna be sitting through this spiel again. How do I know Spock is gay? Well. First of all, Spock's backstory about never being able to live up to societal expectations, causing him to be marginalized by his community and estranged from his father, and forming a found family as an adult resonates as a queer narrative. I don't want to erase the racial aspect of this story, as Spock is in-universe a victim of Vulcan racism because of his mixed heritage. I'm merely pointing out that Spock's story works as a queer allegory, too. Many queer Trekkies have attested that they see themselves in Spock. Well, maybe Spock is just bi. He's just super fucking bi. Wow, way to erase bisexuality, you biphobe. As a bisexual? I'm telling you that he's not bi. I am of the Mike Mahan school of thought. Everyone in Star Trek is bi until proven otherwise. But Spock? He likes men exclusively. Don't believe me? I have the receipts, bitch. Original recipe Spock just could not be less interested in women. He completely rebuffs Uhura's attempts to flirt with him, Chapel's affections only seem to make him uncomfortable, Mud's women have no effect on him, he only pays attention to Layla Kalomi when high on hippie flower jizz. he has no interest in depraying outside of a biological imperative completely out of his control, he gets real weird about Kirk's attraction to various women, including Janice, Helen, Lenore, Edith Keeler, and Marlena, almost like he's jealous. The very concept of the nuclear family seems to perplex and disgust him, Mud outright calls him out for having no appreciation for the female form. And then, of course, there's this exchange. Mr. Spock, this cafe has women that are so... No, I guess not. He knows. He knows Spock is gay. And all of you ace Spock truthers in the comments are screaming at me, all that could prove is that he's not into anyone, did you ever think of that? Yes, Spock being asexual or aromantic is a totally valid reading, but also, I'm gonna let y'all in on a little state secret. Being gay and being asexual are not mutually exclusive. Spock can be both. Point is, Spock is very fucking queer coded. The fact that most people seem to ignore or straight up deny. But I think deep down everyone knows it. Kirk slash Spock is the ship that essentially created modern fandom. Even people who aren't super into Star Trek know about the pairing. These creators definitely know that it's an inexorable part of Star Trek's legacy. And while a lot of them make cute little cutesy nods to it as to throw fans a bone every now and then, it seems like they're simultaneously doing their level best to erase it. I don't expect Modern Trek to have a big grand spurk wedding, but I do find it highly insidious that Spock's queerness not only keeps being ignored, but seemingly beaten out of him with a stick. The two modern iterations of Spock have made a big show out of having him be in a relationship with a woman. It doesn't just feel incidental, it feels pointed. I will admit, I didn't get this vibe as much when they randomly shove Spock together with Ahura in the J.J. Abrams movies. 
mostly because the entirety of the first two movies are misogynist garbage. So, like, first of all, Spock is a Horus teacher and her superior officer at the Academy, which is disgusting and a completely unnecessary change. They could have been, like, co-student instructors or something, but no. Also, the writers are so bored with the idea of Spock and Uhura just being a nice, simple, happy couple together that all they can think of to do with these two is to make them fight. They're constantly breaking up or on the verge of breaking up and then getting back together again because the writers have no imagination. Uhura especially is done a disservice by this plotline, featuring more on screen than she did in the original series, but paradoxically being less developed as a character because she's reduced to nothing but a love interest. When Spock's mother and entire planet are destroyed, she has to do all the goddamn emotional labor for him because he's an emotionally constipated Vulcan. I guess she does shoot a gun sometimes, which is almost like a character arc. Since these movies are 80% about Kirk's man pain, there's not much room for other people to get any character development in. But it's not until Beyond, which was made by people who actually care about Star Trek, for her to actually get something to do outside of kissing Spock or fighting about their relationship with Spock, but even then it's like, too little too late. Basically, Spohura only exists because they wanted the credit for being cool and woke by giving Uhura more screen time, but not actually knowing what to do with her outside of a romantic subplot. That's all women are for, after all. But I think it also exists to discourage anyone from coming into this film series from shipping Kirk and Spock, because the filmmakers had to know about Spurk, right? Well, we can't put Kirk in a committed relationship with a lady because he's our playboy. He f***s a new green chick every night. Maybe multiple ones. He can be pinned down, so we'll put Spock with a horror and then no one will think he's gay. It's genius. When you make a version of Spock without the queerness, there is something fundamentally different about him. Something missing that makes portrayals like this feel uncanny and artificial, like AI art. You basically have a completely new character. Which brings me to... As far as I can tell, this term was first coined in a Tumblr post by user Gartrek, which jokingly proposed that the fandom start referring to Ethan Peck Spock as Blade, because he feels so different from OG Spock that he might as well be a different character altogether. Blade gets and has an awesome girlfriend and everyone wants to him and it's awesome. Blade is fucking badass, cool, calm, collected. Nothing shakes this man. He would never cry like a little bitch. Spock gets no bitches, afraid of women. Blade gets mad put Multiple girls want him. Spock got horny literally one time and freaked out so hard he almost killed someone. Blade fucks like a mountain rat and has sex with his beautiful girlfriend. So even before any official trailers had dropped, people in my Trekkie fan circle were already speculating, dreading, that Strange New Worlds was going to retcon canon and have Spock and T'Pring be into each other. Now, the show could have done something really interesting here. T'Pring is such an important character in Star Trek canon, despite appearing in only one episode of the original series, because she provokes people to speculate about her. We know so little about her, but what we do know is pretty interesting. We know that she's extremely clever, and that she has the ability to play an unfair game and still win. She's not here to please anyone but herself. Like I said in the Amok Time review, she's the Irene Adler of Star Trek. Part of me was actually looking forward to the show expanding her character, hoping that maybe, just maybe, the show wouldn't do the thing. But they did the thing. They just couldn't resist. From the very first episode, the show is very in your face about how much Spock and T'Pring are so in love and they do the fuck on each other. They even kiss in public. I'm going to have to ask you two to do that somewhere else. This isn't just out of character for these two specifically, this is out of character for Vulcans as a whole. Vulcans are not emotionally open like this, this is human behavior. And Spock pre-TOS would not be acting like this. Yes, he eventually came around to accepting his emotions, but only after a very long time and a lot of work on himself. Spock at this point in his emotional journey would be clinging to his Vulcan stoicism with a gorilla grip. This is just straight up skipping ahead to do okay with my emotions Spock from the film era. And for why? Just to show off Ethan Peck's pale ass hairless as a baby seal body? I like my hairy Spock, goddammit! To be fair, I think I would like this better if I'd never seen a muck time and didn't know that these two clearly had absolutely no feelings for each other, and the way the story ended with Spock heading back to his Starfleet life with his newfound family, and to Pring staying on Vulcan with her lover and her freedom, felt like a catharsis for both of them. That's why there's no bitterness when they bid each other goodbye. They understand that they were both victims in this situation.
situation, and they're relieved to have been released from this bond that neither of them want. I think that's a much more interesting story than, no, actually, they did want to do the fuck on each other because men and women just can't resist being attracted to each other. That's heteronormativity 101, and it's just plain lazy. And I'm not really a stickler for little canon details usually, but while we're here, in a muck time, it was never said outright, but it was implied that Spock and T'Pring hadn't seen each other since their bonding ceremony when they were seven. So if they really had this intense romantic relationship as adults, why is Spock looking at a picture of T'Pring at seven years old here? If she's his ex, wouldn't he have at least a few pictures of her as an adult? It just makes this look extremely creepy in retrospect. If they really wanted to explore Spock and T'Pring's relationship pre amok time, I think they could have done so in a way that sticks to canon. Have them try to pursue this relationship that their families and society have pushed on them for appearances sake, while both individually dealing with the fact that they do not love the person they're engaged to. Show Spock becoming more devoted to Starfleet and thinking less about Vulcan. Show T'Pring meeting Stan. yes, I know he was there, but like only for two seconds, and falling for him despite her paper marriage and realizing how unfair her situation is. Ha just having them be into each other is boring and unimaginative and goes against the very thing that makes Amok Time such a nuanced story. How many of Spock's other female paramours have left enough of an impression to be remembered by fans and revived as a character 55 years after her only appearance? T'Pring is special for a reason. I did like the body swap episode though, that was fun. I am Spock. And I am T'Pring. Now that you know, you can likely tell the very clear differences in our mannerisms. Yeah, totally. But shitting all over that story wasn't enough for SNW, because then they had to drag my girl Christine Chapel into this. Unlike T'Pring, it was canon that Chapel always had a crush on Spock, so I expected that they were going to explore that. I hoped that they would find other things to do with her besides mooning over Spock, though, because in the original series, her role was very limited. Really, the only episode where she was heavily featured was What Are Little Girls Made Of, which makes me wonder if SNW is ever going to introduce Roger Corby or not. Beyond that, she was either just assisting Bones in the Med Bay or mooning over Spock. And whenever they did bring up her feelings for Spock, it was almost always humiliating for her. In Naked Time, she bears her soul to Spock under the influence of space drunkenness, only to be rejected. In a muck time, she has soup thrown at her, and in Plato's stepchildren, she finally gets to kiss Spock, but it's under physical force. She knows he doesn't reciprocate her feelings, and him being forced to kiss her just makes her feel miserable and dirty. And then there's Mud's passion from the animated series in which Chapel drugs Spock into making him like her. I, I guess she learned nothing from this. And then after that, there's never any acknowledgement of Chapel's feelings for Spock ever again. Chapel goes on to become a doctor in Starfleet. She moved on with her life and presumably got over her feelings for a man who never felt the same way. So yeah, I wasn't mad that they addressed Chapel having a thing for Spock in SNW. So far, I like the portrayal of her by Jess Bush, and I also think Gia Sandu is doing a perfectly fine job as T'Pring. I have no issue with any of the actors themselves. And I hope going into season two that they do more with Chapel. Personally, I would kill to see more of her and Uhura having screen time together. In TOS, there were a couple of hints that the two were close friends, but neither of them got much focus, so we didn't really get to see that. Mostly, I just want them to give Chapel storylines outside of Spock. Although, judging by the trailers... What does this mean? I don't know. Shut up. Really? So now Spock is a cheater? I don't know, the season isn't out yet, so maybe Spock and T'Pring are broken up when this happens, but it really looks like Spock is cheating on T'Pring with Chapel. That's nice. That's really f***ing nice. Just what I wanted. Uber, hetero, alpha, Chad, Spock who cheats on his romantic partner. Love it. Thanks. If the show made Spurt canon, it would be just as disingenuous as the aggressively heterosexual version of Spock they're peddling right now. Because Kirk and Spock had to go through a lot of shit to become the people they had to be before they could have been a successful couple. In the original series, Kirk and Spock were like... cookie dough. But in the Pike era, they're not even dough yet. They're unmixed ingredients. And if you notice, Spock doesn't actually have much going on beyond his relationship drama. I'm not saying that they have to rehash all the learning to accept my feelings development that he went through in TOS and the movies. I don't want to see that again. It's already been explored beautifully and going over it again would only taint the original arc. 
Now, if S and W had Spock's storyline be him discovering and coming to terms with his queer sexuality, whether that be gay, ace, or whatever, that would have been really fucking cool. And while we're on the topic, I want to address the bi Spock truthers in the room. Listen, you don't have to headcanon Spock as gay like I do. If you see him as bi, that's totally valid. Maybe you believe Spock could have been into both Kirk and Layla, or Thea, or whoever. Although, I'll be completely honest, whenever I see Spock flirting with a lady, it just reminds me of Raymond Holt from Brooklyn Nine-Nine, and he has to pretend to be into women while undercover. You gotta do what you gotta do. Captain Raymond Holt. What's up? But still, Spock could be bi, I suppose. I'm not gonna yuck your yum. Live your life. However, to the SNW apologists who keep licking Paramount's boots by making excuses for the show and saying, well, maybe Peck Spock isn't straight. Just because he likes girls doesn't make him straight. Maybe he's gonna come out as bi. Maybe you're being biphobic. There's not going to be a swimming pool, you stupid slut. You are just lying to yourself and other fans about the show's intentions. You are giving these writers way too much credit. Trust me, they don't care about you, and they're not going to give you what you want. They don't want Spock to be any flavor of Rainbow. They're okay with making original queer characters. Chapel can be bi in a blink-and-you'll-miss-it kind of way as long as she is still primarily interested in men. But Spock? No. And I'll tell you why. Because too many socially awkward, nerdy little straight boys who grew up to be writers for their favorite franchises project onto Spock too much to change him in that way. If Spock likes men, then they can't relate to him anymore. They wouldn't be able to project their fantasies of being an alpha poon hound who gets every hot babe in the room. Because that's all straight Spock is. A straight male fantasy. They are living vicariously through Spock by making him pork all of these girls. It's Spock by way of Chip Driver. Chip gazed at the sexy outline of the murder victim on the floor. What a waste of curves, he growled. This is not queer representation. This is never going to be queer representation. This is a male power fantasy. Stop cheerleading for these people. They are not in your corner. Support the Writers Guild strike, by the way. And I find this blatant erasure and denial of Spock's queerness extremely insidious as it falls on the heels of a string of anti-LGBTQIA plus legislature that conservatives are trying to pass here in the states. Much like Republican politicians and pundits are trying to force gay and trans people into the closet, SNW is literally don't say gaying Spock's identity. Did I ever really expect them to make Spock canonically gay? No. But this insistent pushing of Spock as the most heterosexual man who ever lived, who gets all the girls with his inexhaustible Energizer bunny dick, isn't just historical revisionism, isn't just spitting in the face of queer fans of Star Trek, but is transparent, pathetic, and cowardly. Spock is, always has been, and always will be, a queer icon. What's up, Renegades? It's Editing Ren here, and I just got finished editing the last couple minutes of that video. Um, and <laughs> as you can tell, I was kind of PO'd when I recorded that video. I put this video off for a really long time. I want to say I put it off for a month, but that's not true. I've been putting it off for like a year, ever since SNW last season. Um, because I just didn't know what to say without just sounding angry. I, I couldn't- I couldn't put my words into constructive sentences. But I realized that what I said comes off as really entitled and, you know, like, I think I know what's best. And while I do think I've put some compelling points forward about why Spock is gay and why all of these in-your-face relationships with women are, are BS. Um, I do think it also came off as like, you know, only only I can decide if someone is, is straight or gay. And that's really not how I wanted to come across. Next m videos are gonna be better than this, are, are gonna be a lot more constructive. Um, these were just, I think, some feelings I needed to get out. So I have recently uh, gotten a new job, um, full-time job, 
so I don't know how that's going to impact my video schedule. Um, I will try to make make something, you just may not see my face as often, like I, I may do a lot of voiceover with like b-roll like like I do with most of the uh, Star Trek reviews and I know it's been a while since I put one out for that. Um, I swear that's gonna be the next one. <laughs> I'm gonna do, uh, I, I think it's, I think it's Obsession is next, the one with the vampire cloud. So, uh, be looking out for that soon enough. And again, I'm just, I'm sorry, this was not a good video. So, that's that. Anyway, I'll see y'all later.